Hello everyone. Uh, today is the 17th of March 2021 and I, after years and years and years of being a fan of their products, have just ordered my first Lone Star Grills uh, smoker. Like, comment, share. So this is the smoker. This bad boy is uh, very packed up in here. It's made in USA. Yeah. Everything looks good on the box. Packaging is very nice and tight. Couple of scuffs here, but you know nothing earth shattering. We're gonna pop this bad boy open and see if we can't get her moved here. Lovely. Trying to see how best to do this. Maybe I should leave this up. And just grab the nails from this side over here. Well, and they packed this sucker in. They packed it in, didn't they? All right, here's a two by. We might have to use that later to get the smoker out of the out of the little cart that it's kind of the tracks that it's on right now. There we go. Just pull that nail that way. There we go. 
So I just got one more to pull out here. That'll work. And then I can just one side quarter of the way off and come out of there there we go those are the chalk blocks I'm talking about here those ones are pretty well, maybe those wheels might make it over the lawn. So I've got the 8 inch upgraded wheels here. So maybe they, they might make it over the lawn. Not sure. There's our exhaust port here. Drain port there. Fill port there. Exhaust there. We'll have to scoot this bad boy. Um, and then the I can tell that the the paint hasn't quite yet cured on it because when I run my hand over the top, I get little black streaks of paint on my fingers. So it's all good. So when I do the first smoke, it'll cure help cure the paint on the outside as well, I think. So I'm gonna leave it wrapped up like this though until we get it into the back and then I'll unwrap it. So I'm gonna pause this and hopefully the next video you'll see is us uh, having moved it into the back. The next day. All right, so I'm recording this because my audio was not turned on. So here's the smoker the next day and you can see that it's nice and large here i've got the two ball valves uh come um put on here i've got the wheels locked it's a beast of a smoker i've got the one upgrade that one of the upgrades i got was the uh handle on the side i thought it would be down a little lower but i think that's perfect so here we're going to unlock both the smoke box and the fire box and see what we're working with and so you can see the number of racks in here. I got the stock racks. I didn't get the added racks. Comes with the uh, ball valve attachments for the um, fireboard here um, that are zip tied in here. These racks in here are extremely beefy. Um, I was thinking that they were gonna be oven rack uh, uh, weight. So here, what I'm doing is I grabbed an old cardboard box and I'm going to season everything in that cardboard box. Here we have the actual water pan with the plumbed in water line, the seals, the oven the seals, <clears throat> which keep all of the smoke in. We have our drip guard here, and we're opening up the fire box now. We see the fire box here for the ash pan and everything. And it's very heavy when you first take it out of there. Um, it got bumped around a little bit on shipping, but uh, it looked like uh, it just kind of got off a little off kilter. But I, I have the T-Rack uh, extension in there or upgrade in there. And so here I am taking the T-Racks out, taking out the ash pan, and then I'm gonna take this very heavy uh, rack out for the firebox here <clears throat> I'm gonna open up this ball valve and open up the other ball valve as well and now what I'm doing is I'm pointing and talking as if I can be heard and I'm gonna start going ahead and seasoning up the inside of the smoker with the canola oil here I did the firebox top and bottom I did the uh, sides um, here and I'm just spraying a nice coat on the door as well um, I think I sprayed a little too much on there because I had some puddling going on and plus I think my um, 
smoker is not as quite level because of the slab in the back of my house but here I am doing the uh, firebox as well and getting it nice and uh, uh, seasoned up here the expanded metal grate that's in the bottom of that I did that too <clears throat> I did the front of the actual firebox as well, handles in here. I'm putting it back in and after you get it all seasoned up, then it slides in perfectly. And here you see me putting in the uh, expanded metal grate stuff there. There's a little lip on there that it sits on in the back, so kind of be wary of that. And it slides right in with ease. And then the next thing I slide in here is the ash pan which was seasoned up as well and it slides in nice and easily too like butter the next thing I put in to the fire uh, pan is the tea plates and I got those all seasoned up as well in the first couple here that you see me setting up I'm setting those up because I'm going to go ahead and get my charcoal ready for running this smoker for seasoning and so <clears throat> there's a total of six plates that came with it and here I am I am gonna go ahead and season up the actual smoke box here the upper chamber with um, can of another can of canola oil and I actually ran out about this time it only took me two cans to go ahead and get this seasoned up and like I said I did have some puddling so I think I used a little too much canola oil which is fine because I was able to clean the puddling up here I'm starting on the door itself here and getting that ready to go um, a nice even coat of the um, canola oil on the actual grates here <clears throat> and then makes them slide in as well like butter they were really slippery obviously so I suggest you either wear gloves if you don't want your hands to get nasty and then grate number two and then here you see me spray down the last grate I believe um, with some canola oil and get it ready to go into back into the smoker as well all in all this particular part of the process didn't take me as long as I thought it was going to um, but once I got the um, grates in there I was able next to go ahead and if you see here I'm just kind of demonstrating what I've got going on here and I sprayed down the entire smoke chamber, the entire firebox, the firebox chamber, the water pan, everything. I uh, sprayed everything down there and got it ready for smoking. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and get the charcoal ready. I think I used a little too much charcoal because I've got tons of charcoal still sitting out there right now. Um, one of the tests that I'm going to do is I'm going to get, um, and I'm using uh, Jealous Devil, uh, um, Jealous Devil charcoal uh, briquettes, the larger um, sized ones, and I've had some good success with those on my Weber Smoky Mountain. So. I'm uh, going to continue to use these until I can't find them anymore. I got them online. You can get a 20 pound box online at Amazon for like, I can't remember how much I paid for it. So I've got the ball valve wide open. I'm going to close up the water valve here in lieu of getting everything ready to start. I'm going to go ahead and put my hot charcoal chimney in there, in the side over there. When I started out, I started out wanting to do this with just the ball valve, but eventually when I started cooking the meat, I used the fireboard. So you see I can scoot that in with one hand now. And I'm gonna go ahead and shut the fire box here. And the instructions say to lock. Yeah, so um 
spin it there. Yeah, there we go. You can see me now. Uh, so now I am actually um, not on my Wi-Fi network here at the house. And I can see the fireboard just fine. I can see uh, if I go to the dashboard, I can see where my pit temp is at. I can see it steadily climbing up. Um, so this is going to be really, really cool because I don't have to... Um, I don't have to watch this thing while I'm just at the house, you know. Um, I like, it, I'm a software engineer by trade. I say that a few times, you know, in my videos. Um, so I'm a big tech techie. I love techie stuff that makes lives easier. And so far from what I've seen um, with this particular device, they they've got this on lock. This is really nice here. It I didn't even have to talk. I didn't have to call this session over there. Uh, it 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 went ahead and called it the Friday September seventeenth session on its own. It, it everything was pretty much configured. All I did was plug in the fireboard and started it up, and bam, you see where it is right now. So um, what I can do is I can edit this session. So I'm going to call it, instead of calling it Friday, September 17th session, I'm going to call it seasoning session, something like that. It even tells, you know, what time I started the session. Um, I can share this as well, I guess. I don't know about how that works. So you can see how how slow it's actually taking to get up to my pit temp here and i think what i'm going to try to do um because i need to leave here in about 15 minutes and i'll be able to watch this the entire time it, yeah this is actually really awesome <laughs> it's actually really awesome look at this i don't even have to yep see i can add stuff to it it tells me which probe I'm using. I can add media to it. You know, I can just disc discard the note. And so um, I can add a note there. I can see the temp as I drag my finger along right there. So I can watch this like real time. I, I love this. I love this so far. Wow. Look at that. All right, so since we're right at the 200 degree mark, see how close this temperature is. Yeah, it's right at 200, almost at 200 right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut this down to halfway. So it's halfway right there. And when it gets to 25 degrees prior, then what I'll do is I will um, shut it down a qu another uh, half of that. So another 25 degrees to go. All right. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at where we are right now. We're still holding just a little over 235 on this gauge, even though the fireboard states that it's slightly higher than that. One thing I have noticed is there's some puddling down here of some of the um, canola oil that I sprayed in there. There was a little puddle right there, but I got rid of it. Um, flies all over here okay so you can see that the fireboard says it's at 239 at that great level that um, that I have it at so yeah so she's still trucking along she's been going for about three three and a half hours almost um, the flies seem to like her there's a fly there as you can see Oh, that's kind of warm there. They must like the warmth. Maybe that's the warmth or something they like. It is, it's not cool out here, but it's getting windy. So, 
Yeah. So there's no smoke or anything coming out of there. Um, cause I didn't add any wood to, to, uh, season it. I don't think so. Yeah. Well, I've got the damper right there. I found that that works ideally so far for me and it's keeping that temperature right there for me. And then I've got the smokestack that far open. You can see a little bit of smoke coming out. I don't know if you can see a little smoke coming out of there. Yeah. It's clear blue smoke. Very light. So yeah. So it's uh it is chugging along pretty good now. So I can smell the paint kind of settling in on here and um I'll I'll say this too. Uh right here it's fairly warm. Fairly warm. It's it seems to be warmer here and on the side over here. So I put the coals on this side over here. Uh, let's see, firebox. I'm trying to do this one-handed, y'all. Oh, actually, the firebox is about the same temperature as this door up here. And ac actually, it's hotter there than it is right there. On the side, it's fairly warm over here. I mean, it's it's warm to the touch, but it you know. It's not blazing hot like you, you know, over here, it's warm. And up here, it's not as warm. So, yeah, so this, I mean, this stucker is chugging along pretty good here. I'm still going to have to really practice the temperature control here. So, you can see my fireboard saying it's 240. And then... My gauge there is just a little over 225, so it's at 230. So, yeah. Yep. Continuing to plug along. All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead. I got the ribs all ready to go. Our pit temp is now at 250, a little under 250. Right there. Real accurate, almost pretty, pretty accurate. I'm going to open that up and then I'm going to have to throw some uh, wood on there too to see where that fire is at. So let's get the ribs on there and I'll throw some wood on there too. Okay, so real quick I'll show you where I put the ribs. I put the ribs on those three racks right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down here. And so... Um, And so, yeah, so anyway, I put the ribs on those three racks. I shut the, the I opened the door so the temp is gonna climb back up. Watch how fast the temp climbs up. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna mess around with this just a little bit more. I'm gonna close this up just a little right there. Let's see how that does. And then for this, let's close that down just a smidge. So I went ahead and updated and um, turned on the firewood drive fan and I connected it to the smoker. Oh, uh, about, let me see here, 850, 856, something like that. Yeah. The ball valve a little bit. And it's been holding right at about 245, 244. Oh, the better part of, let's see here. Close to an hour now. Yeah, close to an hour. So, yeah. So, 
I've got um, I've got my oven mitts here. I've got some butter. I've got some honey. The rub that I used. Usually I use brown sugar, but I'm just I'm out of it. So I'm what I'm gonna do, and some apple juice. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay a bed of that down, and we're gonna go get our ribs right now. And that sausage, that sausage is probably overdone. Let's go look, shall we? I'm gonna go ahead and pull. Oh, you know what? I need my keys. All right. Got our keys now. Let's go do some looking. Okay. Unlock. this out sausage looks good oh, oh yeah these are right where they need to be step here all right so we're putting our wrapped up ribs back out on the smoker and so <clears throat> I'm just gonna put them right here one rack at a time no those Back you go. All right. I'll go ahead and lock her back up. About a couple hours, she'll be done. I want you to see the pull away of these bones here. I want you to see how tender these ribs are. Good neighborhood, y'all. 